<laughs> Natalie, it's a bit bizarre, this one, but let me explain exactly why we're here. Look, you can see we're at the Richard III Visitor Centre in Leicester. This place has only been open about the last 18 months or so, and we can show you exactly where they discovered King Richard III's remains. It's just down here. We're underneath now the old council car park, which is just outside, and that is the exact spot where the remains of King Richard III were found. You'll see in just any second now, lights will pop up and show you an image of that skeleton. Look, there it is, right on cue. That is where King Richard's remains were found. And since they were found, Leicester have been on this extraordinary run. I can tell you that he was reburied on the 22nd of March last year. Leicester lost the game before, the, the day before, to Tottenham 4-3. But since then, they've lost four games at the end of last season and the entire of this season, they've taken 91 points out of a possible 117 in that time. And a lot of the locals think the two are linked. We can talk to Sir Peter Salisbury, who's uh, the city mayor here. You've got a smile on your face. I have, absolutely. But, but what do you make of this? A lot of people are talking about it around here, aren't they? Well, I tell you, I don't really believe in miracles, but uh, this is just about as near as they get. Uh, that transformation from being at, what, seven points adrift they were uh, this time last year and now seven points uh, ahead at the, at the top of the Premier League is just unbelievable. And the timing linking with the discovery of King Richard III's remains, a lot of people are linking the two. It's not, it, is it superstition? Is it just a coincidence? Well, it could be just a coincidence, but uh, it is an amazing one, isn't it? It really is. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, just, uh, what, 12 months ago, the eyes of the world were on Leicester and... Uh, we were perhaps a bit worried about our football team, but we were concentrating on burying a king. And now the eyes of the world are on Leicester again, uh, because that football team has uh, gone right from the bottom, right up there to the top. And I know you're a Leicester City fan. Look, you've got your indeed. scarf on here, for goodness I, I sake. I haven't missed a home match uh, this season, except for my mother's 93rd birthday. And how and extraordinary has it been? Have you ever known anything? Absolutely like amazing. I've never, I've never known an atmosphere like it. And of course, uh, the King Power stands uh, have uh, really been bouncing this year, and they're renowned for, uh, for being a bit, uh, a bit up and down. But uh, certainly, uh, they've been going up and down uh, this year with absolute joy. Do you think they'll do it? Do you expect them to do it? Oh. No. I, if I say yes, uh, I'll be uh, accused of having jinxed them. But uh, I've got to say, as every match goes, it's beginning to look more and more certain. It really is. And uh, you know, even, even the biggest sceptics now are beginning to believe that it really can and will happen. Give us an idea of just the interest you've had from around the world. I mean, we've dragged you down here. You're a couple of minutes late, Peter, for goodness sake, because <laughs> you were talking to us. Who? I, it, was, it was Agence France Presse, which is the French news agency. Uh, but, uh, of course, earlier on this morning, I was looking at the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and there was Leicester, right on the front page. And, of course, uh, we've had German television, we've had uh, Dutch television, all within just the last few days. Uh, and, of course, uh, there's more lined up for the rest of this week, and uh, I hope for the rest of the season. With the, with, the, with the king being buried here, I know that gave you a, a, a profile across the world. Now the football team doing this, it's really put Leicester on the map. Oh, it has. It's put us on the national map, but on the international map in both cases. Uh, we had uh, the eyes of the world on us when we buried the king. We had a uh, record number of camera crews here, and we were beamed around the world. And, of course, it's brought a lot of visitors to Leicester, and, of course, that's very good for Leicester to tell its story and its history uh, and tell people about modern Leicester, but it's also very good for our economy, uh, to be frank about it. And uh, quite clearly... Uh, What's uh, been coming here to, to look at the, uh, the story of the king over the, over the last 12 months could be even bigger in, uh, in the weeks and, and months ahead. Well, absolutely. I was, I, I was going to ask you about that. Next season, you're almost guaranteed Champions League football. You, could have the bit that you will have the biggest football teams in Europe across here. What yeah. will that do for, for tourism and for the city? Oh, it's very, it's very good for us. Of course it is. And, you know, so getting away from that. But it's also particularly good for those of us who enjoy our sport. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it seeing them here in Leicester and seeing, seeing them play here in Leicester, but also uh, to welcoming their, their visiting supporters here to Leicester and showing them uh, what a tremendous and very proud city we are. Thanks very much indeed for your time. That's the city mayor, Sir Peter Salisbury. You can see the smile on his face. It's mirrored and mapped by every single Leicester City fan, and a lot of them are linking the fact that there's been this extraordinary turnaround in Leicester's fortunes. As I say, 91 points from the last 117 available since this fella, King Richard III, was discovered and reburied. It is quite an extraordinary story, and that superstition, well, the fans can't stop thinking about it.